There is history in this place There are dragons to be chased And though I don't know who you are Easy flow and a strong, a strong heart And the charm in the way you hide Gently take my stone just kind of started out as you know me and skin phillips like we'd go out tag teaming on photos and like at the time we had to do video grabs so we had video cameras instead of using sequences and so at one point we just kind of looked at each other and like why don't we just make a full-on video and that was dreams of children you know and trick wise and stuff the quality was definitely there like it was like these guys know what to put in a video whether or not they knew how to film it that's two different things <laughs> And then to now where it's like the whole thing is just, it's just awesome. Considering what we started, you know, what, what started out is just like, hey, we got this footage, what are we going to do with it to a full blown project every time. The one thing that, that I was most psyched on was that we could have people from all kinds of different teams. Cause that was basically all that was around back then was team videos and stuff. And we were like the first like high quality video that had like a good cross section of skateboarders. You know, we had only done one or two, and so it was definitely some thrown together stuff here and there. Like Tom Penny's part filmed in one day. All right, next try. If you had a chance to experience any like skateboarding with the guy, like you know how like magical the guy's skateboarding talent was, you know, just aside from knowing how legendary he was but just to witness it like you know skateboarding was like the farthest thing from his mind until he got on the skateboard and like could just do anything we had been to the chain like numerous times like it was a struggle to skate the thing because like you had to deal with the bank where if you got loose you would get pitched to the flat so we brought him there and we just thought like he's penny, you know, we're gonna get the front side flip, the switch flip, like you're gonna get all the stock tricks, but then like he just started rifling them off, just one after another. And when he threw the Nolly backside flip out, like everyone was like, ooh, like you know, you don't wanna go fakey into it. Just a switch Ollie is sketchy. And then he figured like, you know, his Nolly 360, like boom, spun it down and then no no sooner did he make that, then he was back up and he cavalarialed it, you know, like which front side flipped it like it was just like you know all of us skating eventually we just had to like tone back to where we're like let's just watch this guy you know obviously we're witnessing a moment here this guy is just destroying this place right now like no one's ever going to be able to come here and skate again and he just sealed the deal 
with the switch backside flip, which, you know, my immediate thought was like, he was kind of kicking him around. I was like, well, you know, this one he doesn't have, you know. Like, two or three tries later, he's putting him down, like, whatever. A few tries later, that's it. Like, he just sealed the bank off for good. Don't come back here. The bank is definitely closed. <laughs> it's over with. That was the final time I feel like anything was ever done there. I don't, I can't even imagine, like, especially in Southern California, like, when one individual just shuts a spot down. Like, I don't think, nobody goes there, not even to this day. Like, you can't go there, because you know, like, no matter, it doesn't matter what you do, like, it just will never compare to the one-man destruction session that he just put down and, like, blessed skateboarding with. I'm just gonna seriously try to land it, and if I don't, then we're gonna go. Okay? It's funny to think of, like, how it is today to film, you know? And then how it was to film that video part. It's like, the whole four-wheel drive part is just so, you know, not a single night of stressing about the next day. It's just like, driving around with a video camera in the car on a normal day going skating. Like, it wasn't any stress, it was real easy. It's funny. Is that in the camera? Yeah. It's so easier, you can just get away with just skating how you skated every day. It gets harder, way harder to film a video part now. Like, I can go out and get a trick today if I wanted to and put it in the video, but not something that wouldn't impress people that much, you know? When I watch Heath in that video and I watch everybody else in that video, I just think like this kid is so advanced. Like backside lip sliding 13 stair rails when people aren't even going that big at all. He's a, he's a perfect example of a strictly business skating, you know? He's like a stuntman. Sometimes I hear about things what he tries and it won't be just one time go do it and you're done. Like maybe like three times back and then finally do the sketchiest thing he's ever done in his life. been at that time real close to Heath for a while because we both skated for foundation and kind of decided to go on the birdhouse after that. But we didn't really ever go filming with each other that much. There was in one part where he did the lip slide to shove it. I remember I was there for that thinking, holy Moses.
cameras have changed, and it's just totally evolved. The filming has become more of a, uh, an art, you know, whereas before it was kind of buddy cam. I'm a real filmer. Uh, look at my camera. People would film, and they'd have a fisheye, but they'd be six feet away, you know. Or now you have a fisheye, you'd be right up there, right in the action.
Bye. I was filming for Interface, and it was like, what can I do? You know, a foot trick or a lip trick, or you know, it's just like you're trying to figure out what to do. And then the picnic table was there. Just the idea came for them to hold the picnic table up, and ended up being sturdy enough to where you can actually do some tricks on it. It was kind of hard at first because I was scared that I was going to go up to do a rock fakie and the thing would shift back and then I was coming down I'd hang up on the coping. So I was like, I don't know about this, this is kind of sketchy. So that just kind of evolved into trying the rock fakie. One of the things that was hard about that thing was speed. I mean, you didn't have any speed to do it. The picnic table itself and tricks on it wasn't the hard thing. You know, it was getting up to it. Lincoln was there too, and Lincoln skated it in his crazy way too. So that was just a fun thing. That was just a, one of the trying to figure out what to do and the camera was there and it, it all worked out. Skiing at the most. Love part? Why? Why? I already told you. I explain it in the Sixth Sense video. So why don't you go ahead and show that clip right now? Love part? It's perfect. It's got everything. Big ledges, little ledges, long ledges, short ledges, big stairs, little stairs. It's got everything. I skate there every day, unless the cops are there. was a good sport. I asked him if he would be in my section in the Sixth Sense video, and he was down for it. So that was the most fun, was uh, skating with him. Don't touch me. Stop right there, buddy. Hey. Oh. Oh, no. I got asked to go on the uh, Route 66 tour, and I had fun on the trip, but uh, it was it broke me off pretty good. I got hurt the first two days really bad. Broke one of my uh, bones in my wrist. It took me two weeks to be able to start skating again from the first fall. Like I made a trick and I was I was getting psyched again and then I went and wrecked myself on that rail endeavor. Seeing the rail, I looked at it and I thought for sure I was gonna do it. And I was like, man, this is the first try. Like whatever the case was, I was gonna try to ollie to the rail and I did and uh, board uh, didn't, didn't uh, go with me. Definitely a scary feeling. I, uh, I knew it right when it was happening. I could feel it. I was flying down onto my face. Smashed it really good. Broke my wrist, another bone in my wrist. So the broke two bones in my wrist. Uh, my face was just split wide open. I didn't know how bad it was. I had to walk three blocks back to the van 
get in the van, go to the hospital. And the doctors couldn't believe it. They uh, checked my head, they examined me, they asked me if I was on drugs. They didn't know what had happened. They didn't understand exactly how it happened. Howie, what happened to you? I don't know. <laughs> Neil forgot to lock into a 50-50. Uh, what happened? What were you doing? Uh, damn skateboarding again. Skateboarding? Pull it away for a second. Oh, wow. Wow. He's like bleeding all over the place. Like, basically tore his whole top. Um, no, like, eyebrow area on the side. Really huge lap. He's got a severe, um, possible fracture. They were so surprised that I didn't have any kind of concussion, no swelling of the brain, no nothing. <laughs> Thank you, Ty, for being there for me, hanging out with me in the emergency room. And uh, when I found out I was okay and I had a friend there, you know, Ty was talking to me, he kept me company, he kept me laughing. We were laughing, I'm sitting there with a broken wrist, a big gash in my eye, and we're sitting there laughing, making jokes, and the doctor was like shooting me up with all the drugs, and cleaning me up, and the doctor I had uh, was so good, he sewed it through my eyebrow, you can't even see a scar, I, like I said, no concussion, I was not dead, because I could have died on that rail. And, uh, something like that. It can happen to anybody. You know, Jamie Thomas is doing crazy stuff all the time. He went through an injury and he's already back on fire. You know, he's he's one of the best and will always be one of the best. It made me respect people like that because they keep doing what they're doing and they come out good. The generators, okay, you could use that kind of stuff like, hey, I got generators and lights, let's go light something up tonight, you know? And dudes would get psyched, you got a TV there shooting photos and it just, like, the whole chemistry works. The majority of those last three videos feedback the reason and modus, so much of the footage is at night. Every single night until five in the morning. Five in the morning. We're going up to San Francisco, three in the morning, Shani trying the, the backside nose blind grind. Right here. Tie and I'm going down. I mean, we'd work, you know? It got to a point where the deadline was coming up and we were really working. It was like a job.
think we're I watching Trans World. I want to say, what are we watching? Are we, wa are we yeah. watching Trans World? Muska. What up, dog? It's chilling. What's that? Some handrails. Oh shit. Muska is definitely one one of those people that that I, I had never met before doing a video. You know, we end up trying to work on a part together and we end up meeting each other and hanging out and becoming friends and like I don't know, like he he's the essence of what skateboarding is, you know, like he just goes out, has fun, you know, and it's not like, oh I'm gonna go try the hardest trick today, this and that. Like he's just gonna go skate. And that that's how it works for him. Like he goes and skates. And that's what his video parts are. I don't care what anyone says. It's not like premeditated, like, okay, get the filmer, da da da, get the star for let's go meet here, I gotta get this trick. Like, he's got his boom ox, he's got all of his boys, like, he's just out there, like, having fun, like, just rage and skating. Like, like it's like back in the day, you got your suicidal tendencies taping the ghetto blaster, blasting, and you're doing judos off the line tramp. Like, that's what a session with Muska is all about. Last Star Center, this is Edward Velasquez speaking. How may I help you, Mr. Muska? Uh, how you doing today, sir? Terrific, how are you? Right, I'm pretty good, pretty good. Just uh, cruising AZ, you know? Yep. Little vacation out here. Okay. Uh, what's going on? You know where any good handrails are out here? I have no idea. You haven't been there yet? No. No? Never, never been there. All right, man. Where's it from? You ever skateboard? Nope. Did never? Never. Oh, man. From? Guess what? What's that? <laughs> <laughs> the day in Arizona was ridiculous. I mean, that's what it will go down as, as the day. It pretty much went something like this. We went on this road trip to Arizona. It was a whole bunch of people that were supposed to have parts and feedback. And uh, like Muska meets us at the skate shop in Arizona. We get ready to go skate. Like, yeah, he's like, I know some spots. So we go to this empty pool. Everyone skates the pool. And uh, whatever, we're about to leave. And Muska sees this roof gap there. And it was a pretty, pretty diesel roof gap. Like, he ollies it and then the backs of 180 it, no problem, which was like pretty gnarly, like the backs of 180. So then after that, he's like, yeah, I know this other spot. And it's this bump over like an oil drum. And then also right next to it was like these little banks that everyone else was skating. Everyone was skating the banks. Muska rolls up on the bump to oil drum, kick flips this thing. The oil drum was like big, like, damn, it's pretty nice, like whatever. On our way out of there, we find this ledge. And it's like a ledge now that everyone knows. It was down like, I don't know, 13 stairs and it had like a crusty ass kink at the bottom and it had like metal rods sticking out of the middle you can impale yourself on, but go to that thing, 50s it, and frontside tail slides it, no problem, whatever, just like, Jesus Christ, this guy just going for it today, right? But I mean, he's not, he's just skating, like whatever, he's just skating, that's his deal, right? And sunglasses on to boot, just amazing, right? By this time, it's starting to get a little bit later, and he's like, yeah, I want to try to get to this one more spot. And it was like a nine-star rail and then a 12-star rail right afterwards. He does lip slide down the first rail and frontside 50 down the next rail, right? And we're like, Jesus Christ, this, this dude's just doing it today, taking care of business. We're just bugging out on it, right? So, like, after that, we go to leave. The night was over, right? On the way out, Muska happens to see this kink rail, right? This is the kink rail on the cover of Feedback. Looks at it, whatever, we all set up, set up the lights. 50's at first try. He's trying it. He's trying it. He's trying it. Still the same day, 50's at first try, no problem. Like, everyone's just like, are you kidding me? This dude's just taking care of business today. Like, I mean, I can tell the story, but no one will still realize how gnarly this day was, right? No one, I'm sorry, there's no way no one will ever pop this day, right? So we're like, all right, this dude just did all this crap, and then 50 to double king for that first try. The day is probably over by then, right? Like, it's, it's almost midnight by this time. He's got one more spot, and there's this gap to rail. Well, it was like a 10-star rail, but with like a little gap in the middle. Whatever it does, ollie out nose slide on that, and ollie out backside 50-50 on that. And uh, that finally was like the end of the night. That was like 2 in the morning by that time. That was ridiculous. Like, that was the gnarliest thing I'd ever seen. See, like that. What is on it? <laughs> and then look, or you can make it just go like this.
Cyclops. Look at his mouth. That's a big smile. Look at this. Stay there, Jason. Jefferson. <laughs> I was filming with Jeremy so fun. You know, we would just kick it. We would go skate and we would just cruise around. It would be an all day thing. You know what I mean? Like, you, you weren't really worried about getting anything done. Really. I don't know, they wanted all these little skits. You just pick that outfit out and boom, it was on. Half that footage is so shaky because it was one of the funniest things I've ever seen. And he was a natural at it too, it was hilarious. He put the outfit on and he was that character. Oh, it was so fun. And the mini rant skating, like, the slams he took were so hilarious. I mean, he was just getting worked and I remember just laughing so hard. It was rad. Five years, who knows where it can go, man. I mean, it's all—it's all in our hands, what to do and what we want to do, basically.